what is your favorite Bond movie per era? Starting with Sean Connery, he said Goldfinger. Go no, wait, did he say what was the License to Kill? That was Timothy Dalton. Mm. See if Johnny remembers all of them. Okay. But uh, yeah, okay, so we're just gonna skip over uh, what's his name, uh, George Lazenby. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger Moore is the spy who loved me. Mm -hmm. uh, after Roger Moore, we got Tom Hanks. Tom oh, Hanks as James Bond. That'd be great. You'd watch it. You'd watch it. You know uh, who was going to be James Bond instead of Timothy Dalton? Who? Um, Sam Neill. Hmm. Sam Neill was actually in the running to be a, uh, the next James Bond, but I guess Timothy Dalton beat him out or something. Beat him up? Beat him out. <laughs> yes. Okay, so after Roger Moore, we got Timothy Dalton. You said possibly License to Kill. You're not even really sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then we get to... Pierce Brosnan, which would be The World Is Not Enough. I actually didn't answer that one yet. but yeah, it's, either it's, that, it's either that or Goldeneye, but you were always exactly. more towards The World Is Not Enough. Yeah, yeah, it's a toss-up of those two. But yeah, that's a, okay, exactly, yeah, okay, good. And Daniel Craig, you said... Would be Skyfall. Mm -hmm. Yep. You good see, I, I actually wasn't even listening to you, I just know. <laughs> you uh, for this? Shoot, nice. shoot the pots and have them ricochet back and kill the guy. Alright, so I got some uh, trivia here that's kind of interesting on how each Bond actor left the role. Oh, okay. You see, I don't even need the glasses. Alright, so basically Sean Connery <laughs> was just kind of sick of the role. Simple as that. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember if I ever said it on... on uh, on an episode, but uh, it's kind of like Christopher Lee got sick of doing the role of Dracula, so he just stopped. Yeah. He was being typecast as that role, so he got sick of it. Exactly, so. yeah. And there's, you know, some other reasons in there, too. I think he wasn't really getting along with, like, someone on, um, involved. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it's, like, if it's, like, the whole company or one person in particular, but uh, a, a huge portion of it was, a uh, uh, typecast. Um, What's then... The there it is. What was it? Um, it was next. George Lazenby left the role on his own because he was arrogant. Okay. Be and yeah, basically he wasn't getting along again with. Uh, I guess, I can't. I don't know if it's like. A, I'm got, not getting enough respect around the here. The film producers or the directors or something. He he wanted to you know voice his opinion on how the actor or how the character should be and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you know he he's a newbie. He just came on. You know he just came on. He's not even an actor. And um, well, he had been an actor prior. I'm sure. No. He didn't. That was his first role? That was his first role, and he faked it. The story with that is his, um, I guess he, he was out with his girlfriend one day, and, uh... They were just like, you look like James Bond. No. Were like, yes, no, I am. not even close. <laughs> no, he, um, he was out with his girlfriend one day, and then they, they saw that there was a... <gasps> oh, we gotta censor this. <laughs> um, a casting call for James Bond. So, so he just m randomly walked by and saw that, and he was like, all right. I, I, I don't, I don't know. He, and he said that, uh... Mm. He told his girlfriend he's going to be like the next women. James Bond. Wait a minute. No, I don't. These are private quarters. <laughs> oh, it's the black dude. Oh, it's Morgan Freeman. It's not Morgan Freeman. It's kind of Morgan Freeman. It's not at all like Morgan One day it'll look like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> all right, Sean, start off by asking me how did George Lazenby get hired for James Bond? How did George Lazenby get hired for James Bond? <laughs> all right, um... So there was a casting call for James Bond, right? I'm going to interrupt you again. <laughs> and um, he told his girlfriend, I'm going to be the next James Bond. So Man, he, that guy could take a bullet really good. So he ran into the office, okay, and um, and, and just ran right past the secretary, uh, and then upstairs, and then into, I guess, the room where they were doing the casting calls or something. And then he says, I hear you're looking for James Bond. And meanwhile, he was decked out in like a... Um, a tuxedo and everything, like trying, like you know, all groomed and everything, looking like James Bond. I guess just as an everyday outfit. Just, I, I don't, I, I don't. I mean, this is like the short version, basically, what he did. He, he went in there with no experience and just tricked everyone, wow. basically. And then, and you know, of course, they asked him about experience. So he gave them a bunch of BS stories about like he did uh, movie roles in like other sides uh, of the world, you know, so he, <laughs> like places that he didn't think that they could track. Yeah, of so, course. So. They fell for it. And then, okay, so they wow. hired him as James Bond, and then he froze up, and he's like, okay, actually, I got something to tell you. Uh, I'm not actually, I, I don't I have no experience here, you know? 
And they're like, huh, what are you talking about? You just fooled everyone. You're an actor. So they hired <laughs> him fair. as James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> so how he lost the role was uh, he go he was arrogant, basically. And uh, he wasn't getting along with the, uh, I don't know, writers or uh, producers or directors. I, I don't really know. But um, So that's why those films aren't as good that's why he only has one yeah <laughs> because he was he was too arrogant and he wanted james bond to be this way or that way and meanwhile he just came in off the street so he didn't really have a whole lot of room to uh he just looked the part and nothing else basically <laughs> basically and somehow like i said it's one of the uh top fan favorite james bond movies wow um <laughs> that that says a lot yeah and then timothy dalton there was some sort of writer's strike i think it was a writer's strike but after he did his first two movies there was some sort of delay where like the contract ended or something i can't remember and um, uh, when he was offered the role back, it was like, I think, four years later or something. Mm-hmm. Or maybe three or four years. I can't remember. But um, I'm kind of rusty on the details, but this is the roundabout explanation of what happened. Um, <laughs> so he was offered the role back, and um, he didn't want to do a lot. He just wanted to do, like, one more movie or one or two. Uh-huh. And they said, oh, man, uh, after that long of a gap, you can't just do one. You know, yeah. you, you're, you have to expect to do, like, you know, uh, like, at least four. So he didn't want to do that many, so he quit after two. So he walked away from it. He wasn't obligated by contract anymore because the contract was, I guess, expired or, you know. So he had the choice to walk away. Hmm. Brosnan. Oh, he just did. Yeah, he just walked away. So Brosnan, after mm-hmm. he did his four, they called him up and said, like, hey, uh, you had a great run, but uh, that's it. <laughs> I thought I had a camera. So, but I think you're supposed to. Brosnan was the only one that was actually dismissed from the role. There it is. Okay. Roger Moore walked away from the role because he was getting into, like, what, his uh, mid-50s, there 60s, or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, it was his choice to leave because uh, they, didn't, they didn't request him to, but he was like, okay, listen, I'm uh, getting up here in age, and uh, with, with the Bond girls being, like, 30 years younger than me. It's starting to look disgusting. <laughs> Basically is what it was. So he, that's that's why he left. It was just because he was he felt that he was getting too old in looks. But not physically because he actually did a lot of, uh, I think, like like uh, physical exercise and stuff and like, running and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So he's physically fit for the part. But as far as age goes, he's like, I'm starting to look like this. like I Geezer? <laughs> yeah, he said it's just starting to look disgusting. Wow. I respect that. Yeah. So he walked away. Uh, on his own terms and then uh, so yeah Brosnan was the only one that wasn't offered the role back hmm. I wonder why because the, the movies were silly and you can't have that anymore yeah and meanwhile I think he's the best one yeah a lot of people do I'm sure blow him <laughs> <laughs> sound the alarm nice. no you don't <laughs> And that is just a lot of the alarm. You still missed him. It's just the explosion that got him. So what do you think is the... Uh, what's what's the James Bond movie that you think has the most, like, goofiness in it? Like, the most humorous? Mm. The one that one, the, they're clearly going for, like, comedy? Um, it'd probably be a Roger Moore movie. Yeah? Uh... Crap. I want to say, I think it's Octopussy. <laughs> uh, whenever they dress him up as a clown. Yeah. Uh, there's that. Um, I think Moonraker. I like that one. Had him skydiving and had Jaws fall onto a circus tent. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, extremely far-fetched, yeah, but not the craziest. Yeah. Ooh, weapons. Oh, I know, I know, there's a ridiculous moment. Uh... I think it was in, um, which one? I think it was For Your Eyes Only. It was a Roger Moore movie. Mm -hmm. I think it was that movie where uh, he's in a yellow car, and it's like a really small, like, bug Mm -hmm. car. And um, there's a chase scene, and at some point in time, the whole car flipped over. Mm -hmm. uh, And they had, like, all these people around them, like, actually help him pick up the car and flip it back over. Uh So he can can keep going on with the chase. Oh, wow. (laughs) And um, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, it's like, okay, the car flipped over and you just picked it back up. Which, I mean, I, I, possible, but it's just like, why was it in the movie? Yeah. I don't know, to show that everyone's on James Bond's side. I guess so. Look at all these weapons. 
You just killed his, his entire army. Oh, I know. There it is. Dude, the man with the golden gun. Whenever he did the, uh, he jumped over the, uh, uh, he jumped the car over that ramp across the river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that stunt right there, that's a little ridiculous. That was intentionally, uh, goofy. Yeah. It's actually one of those, it's probably on a list of, like, top goofiest James Bond moments or something like that. I don't know. I like the goofy over the top moments. It's yeah. A lot more entertaining to me than just taking it super seriously. Yeah. I generally don't like movies that take itself too seriously, like action or not. I d I d I'm not a big drama kind of guy. Yeah, it, it does. Holy crap, he's still going. <laughs> oh my god, he had like 50 shells in his chest and he was still going. It's like The Rock. <laughs> like the Rock right there. Just reloading <laughs> right as you're being, like, shooting him in the face. He's floating up the stairs. I remember that. <laughs> up the up the ladder, you just float up. Floating up the stairs and floating down the stairs. <laughs> Ooh. That's it. You got this. And the camera jerks around you and you float around and you did it. And you were all mad. And I, like, I, I just said I don't like this level. Hey, I dropped down by 50%. <laughs> That's a lot better than I was expecting. That's pretty good, though. Hey, well, I got all 25 enemies. <laughs> you think? 